All right, kids, it is time for my last, like, I think this is probably my last proper collection video for a while, um, unless I maybe decide to, like, update other ones in the future, maybe I'll do a, oh, here's a third Criterion one, if, for example, I get a whole bunch of new ones, and I'm like, hey, let's show them off kind of deal. Uh, might do an end of the year roundup kind of thing, I don't know, it's a new thing. Um, so, in Australia, we have uh, a production, a distribution house, I should say, uh, called Umbrella Entertainment, uh, sometimes noted down as Umbrella Australia. Um, they've updated their logo a few times. Here is one of their various logos. Uh, this is probably their most modern one, um, with that being the most modern look at it, uh, fiddle focus. Um, of course, this is uh, Clive Barker's Hellraiser. So they have a whole different display of films. Um, and so I think this kind of gets you, <clears throat> it gives you at least. Uh, if you're not Australian, then uh, I might probably put in the title of the video, you know, like my Umbrella Austra uh, Australia collection kind of stuff like that, even though it's more or less Umbrella Entertainment. Um, either way, uh, I have a lot of them because... Well, it's like it's like the one I did the other week or the other day, the shock one, the cult cinema collection. It's a type of it's a distribution company, spe almost specifically Australia, New Zealand, um, and I have a lot of them. So I figured, hey, you know what? Because some of these are ones that you could probably get in Criterion or or Arrow or Shout. Um, let's take a look at them and see my almost uniquely Australian collection. Uh, yeah, someday I might actually do a Australian film collection to kind of look at all the Australian films I have. Um, I don't really know at this stage because I have a good few of them, but we'll get around to it at some stage. One, I'm desperate for videos. So let's get on with it. Now, because there are a lot of them, the hope is that I don't miss any. If I do, well, mm, too bad. Uh, but this one, number one, is The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. Uh, the Arrow video has a really great cover of it, but this is... Of course, pardon the viewfinder. Uh, this is the Umbrella video version. Um, it's quite a crazy ass film. It even has a quite a decent back cover too. Uh, interesting film. Very interesting. Next up, we have Bottle Rocket. Uh, this is Wes Anderson's first feature film. Um, I do hope at some stage to get the Criterion version of it. I didn't know that there was a Criterion version of this, which kind of seems dumb of me, given that by the stage, I, by the time I bought it, I already had Royal Tenenbaums and I think Life Aquatic. I don't know. I think I had them already, um, but I may have just found them Region B cheap kind of deal. Uh, whereas, you know, this is the Australian release. But again, it's still the, it actually is the Criterion um, remaster. Uh, there's another one later in my B section that I'll show you. Uh, that is the same kind of deal. It's the Criterion Remaster. It even, I don't think it has the Criterion logo. I can't remember. One of them do. I can't remember if it was this one or one later on that has the Criterion or at least the Janus Films um, logo. So it makes it obvious. like, oh, okay, they're the guys who did it. Uh, whereas, of course, uh, Umbrella didn't actually do this transfer. They don't really do transfers. They just grab like, like oh, we'll hire this one and just distribute down Australia, that kind of deal, you know. Next up is Babadook. Babadook. This one makes more sense than it's an Australian, uh, because it's an Australian film, uh, that of course it gets an Australian release. Uh, great poster, amazing horror film, really good. Okay, so here it is. Um, this one, uh, The Blob, this is actually a triple thread. It has disc one, The Blob 1988, disc two, The Blob 1958, which is definitely, that's the version, that's the only one I've seen so far of this collection, but that is definitely the uh, Criterion remaster. And it also has Son of the Blob as a standard definition um, feature. So, yeah, it is, it also has the, the original poster for the first one, and I believe for uh, the second one, so it has a double, it has a slipcase with uh, both posters, which is really cool. Um, I don't think it mentions on the outside or anything about it being a Criterion thing, 
But uh, for the most part, it is definitely, definitely still the Criterion one. Next up, as seen in, as seen in my slipcase video, we have Body Melt. This is probably my favorite of their releases uh, from Umbrella, just because of the cover. <laughs> like, this is actually a classic Aussie film. Uh, not many people know about it, um, but of course it also has a reversible cover uh, on the inside, which is really cool. I really like this cover, because I wanted to get, I'd seen this version, like this cover, the slipcase, at like JB before, and I was like, oh... I don't know if I'd want to get it, because, like, I was still growing into being a big horror aficionado, and, as I like to call myself, um, <laughs> and so, uh, when I saw this in its slipcase, and I think it was on sale, because it was quite, quite pricey because of the slipcase, and because it was, like, a rare-ish film to get, so I figured, yeah, I'd get it on sale, and I did, and luckily I was able to get it in its slipcase, which I very much obviously like. Next up we have Cargo. Uh, this is a remake kind of thing. It's um, a feature length version of a, it's another Aussie film. Uh, it's a feature length version of the short film that came out like a year or two before it that had won a bunch of awards. I think this one kind of got swept underneath the radar for some people. Like even though this is a uh, film, it's even got Martin Frame in it. So you've got at least a big enough star. Um, but yeah, it's really, it's quite interesting. It's a good post-apocalyptic film. Next up, we have John Carpenter's classic Assault on Precinct 13. Um, this one's probably one of their most interesting looking covers. I think it has, if I'm not wrong, uh, it doesn't actually say, I don't believe. My, my friend says that uh, this actually has a version of um, Dark Star uh, on it because, of course, it actually has the poster for Dark Star on the inside, as you know, outside of just having a sold on precinct thirteen, like that's like the, that's the slipcase version of it, um, which is really cool. I haven't actually seen, I haven't seen the film yet, and I haven't actually seen if Dark Star is on it, but I do believe it is. Either way, I still have Dark Star as an extra blue ray, so you know. Next up, we have Cowboy Bebop the movie. Um, yeah, I also have the TV show uh, on Blu-ray, but that's just a Madman release, whereas this is an Umbrella release. Yeah. Next up, we have the first of many of the Beyond Genres one. So this is still an Umbrella release. Uh, quite an interesting film. This is Dagon. Uh, if you want to see it in more detail, it is in my slipcase video. Because it is, uh, it has a reversible sleeve and everything. It's quite crazy. Uh, next up, we have Dark Age, which is, um, as it notes down there, if it'll focus, a Ozploitation classic, which is um, an interesting way to sell a lot of these films. I actually bought this the day before I met John Jarrett, who's the lead, but I got him... To, initially, I was going to get him to sign this, but then I realised he was in Picked at Hanging Rock, so I got him to sign my Criterion version of that instead. I feel like I should go into detail into, like, meeting him, because, like, I met him, he it was a free order. I think it was a free autograph. Um, probably not, it may have been, like, ten bucks. But I got an autograph, and I was meant to get a picture with him as well, but I didn't because I couldn't, didn't really care, to be honest. Um, but there was actually a guy there who showed him a magic trick, and I was like, and I was like, I think his name was Jaden. I was like, I was like, Jaden? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, and I, was, and I mentioned two, because I went to two different primary schools. And so I mentioned one of them, and he didn't know what I was talking about. But then I mentioned the second one. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, do you know my, yeah. I was like, do you know my older brother, Sam? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And so he's actually a friend from primary school who was doing, like, showing a magic trick to John Jarrett. John Jarrett was like, what the hell is going on? Um, so we, I ended up bringing uh, this, the guy to see Sam, because Sam was working at the convention, I think. I think he was working there, yeah. Anyway, that was just a fun little story. Um, next up, we have Night of the Living Dead. You may notice one thing. This isn't actually George A. Romero's, even though it says at the top there. Uh, it is, in fact, Tom Savini. Uh, it's a colour remake of the original film. Um, and I mean, look, it's... <sighs> a lot of people could criticise, like, you know, Psycho, how they remade that, but it was terrible. This is, like, what a good remake, which is, like, almost probably, like, shot for shot. It's like, oh, hey, let's remake the same film, but with the guidance of the original creator, George Romero, but with updated special effects and, you know, colour and stuff. So... 
it actually is quite fun. So it's like if you don't want to watch the original, uh, like you know, uh, Not a Living Dead, if you don't care for older horror, if you want more gory stuff, then it's like this is like a great remake version of it. So yeah, it's 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 fun. Then we have this, which is definitely a different kind of uh, thing. It's called Drive-In Delirium. I've only got one of these presently. There was a lot, actually. There was like four or five of these. This one is 60s and 70s sad, uh, savagery. Noted as over 140 demented trailers, uncut, uncensored, and remastered in high definition. Um, so, yeah, I, I got it mostly because I really like Barbarella. Um, which I'm surprised that's not an Umbrella release. Uh... They might have re-released it on the Umbrellas label. But yeah, the whole there's another one about the 80s. There's one that's specifically for horror films. It actually tells you what all of the uh, things are. It's And it has, a re like it has a reversible slip where it tells you what all the trailers are. Um, like, for example, it has trailers from The Warriors, uh, Killer Force, The Fury, Carrie, Salem's Lot, Halloween... It has a hell of a lot. Uh, one's from the, the part one is from the sixties, and part two is from the seventies. Um, they have actually recently shown these at the Astor Theater in Australia. They've, they showed them like early twenty nineteen um, because a lot of them have come out, and they would like be like, "Oh, we're going to show you this," which is like almost okay. So it's three hundred sixty seven minutes. They show you a lot of this. Um, I don't think it was this one. I think it was one that was just like one off thing. It was like two hours long. And again, this is two hours of trailers. And then they're like, we're going to choose one of these trailers and show it as a film. So you got to double feature, which is pretty cool. But it was like a surprise double feature. Next up we have Electric Boogaloo and Machete Maidens Unleashed. Okay. Um, this is a double documentary. Uh, this one I got, oh, I got Supernova like two years ago, I think. Um, I had to be, like, sold on it per se, but, like, there was a whole bunch of different films I was going to get. I think I got this with another Umbrella release. Um, I'll be honest, I can't remember for the life of me as to which film it was, so I might remember when I pick it up. But for the, for the, I should know, Man from Hong Kong. Hey, see, I remembered. Um, I think I bought Man from Hong Kong first, and then got, or maybe I got this one first and then, uh, got some extra, like, got extra money the next day, uh, it was like 30 bucks to get, uh, Man from Hong Kong, but yeah, so it's a double documentary, um, I've only seen Electric Boogaloo at this stage, uh, saw it with my friend, because he really wanted to see it, so we, like, you know, made a day, oh, let's go hang out and we'll watch this, and we double featured it with, like, Hot Fuzz, but with, like, the audio commentary, um, really fun stuff. Next up, we have Enemy Mine. This has Dennis Quaid and Louis Gossett Jr. Uh, it's quite a fun film. My, my friend suggested it to me. It's a very good film. Next up, we have another Ozploitation classic. This is the... Well, I, I don't know if it's the original, but like I don't think there's a remake. Uh, this is the classic Fair Game, uh, which is a 2K remaster as well. Bloody hell. Um, I don't really know what to say about this one. It's really... It's brutal, but um, it's pretty much woman has bad stuff done to her by a group of guys. You can expect what that probably is, but then she gets her revenge. So it's a revenge flick. It's pretty fun. All right, this one I'm really happy to talk about. Uh, this one is Girl Asleep. You might not know about this one. This one's like a 70s Aussie-inspired um, kinds of <sighs> teenage whimsical nightmare, I think. <laughs> um... The first half is like this whole, I think she's a girl, about a girl who's turning, okay, um, I think she's turning 15, or maybe she's celebrating her 14th birthday, I can't remember if it was the 14 or 15, but you know, the world is closing on 14 year old Greta Driscoll, um, and a teen at a crossroads she can't bear to leave her childhood behind because it contains all the delightful things that give her comfort in this otherwise incomprehensible world. Um, and so it even says, existing in a bubble of security alongside only friend Elliot, played by Harrison Feldman oh, from Upper Middle Bogan, who I met. And I don't know if there's going to be an image on screen, because, like, I, if, if Pierre, you're editing this, give me a, send me a message about it, because uh, I'll send you the, the image. Uh, Pierre was actually there when I, uh, not when I met him, but was at the same theme park. We, I went to, we all went to uh, Luna Park last year for a uni thing. 
uni party and he was there because he goes to my uni. Um, and he's actually the main, uh, obviously, male actor. But pretty much it's about a girl who's, you know, struggling with that stuff about getting, you know, growing up and stuff. And it becomes, the second half is like this whole bizarre, like, surreal thing. And it's really fun. Uh, and it has a great dance sequence at the end. So, you know, classic Aussie stuff. Um, and then, of course, we round up with uh, Hellraiser. Well, of course, you know what Hellraiser is. It's gory as shit. <laughs> I would get the Arrow remaster of it, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with uh, this version, and I don't really care to get any of the sequels. I like the first one. Don't care to get the sequels. But, you know, if I end up getting a chance to grab them and watch them, maybe... Oh, here's a pretty new one from 2019, I believe. Uh, another oisploitation classic. Uh, the Howling Free, The Marsupials, because it's Australian, of course. Uh, it is really horrific. Like, look at that. Oh, that's uh, that's uh, some scary stuff right there. Kind of funny, too. It's weird. Um, I do have Joe Dante's original, uh, The Howling, which I also quite like. Next up, we have The Land That Time Forgot, because I really like my old 50s, um, you know, actually, this is 1976. What? I thought this was from the 50s. Doesn't matter. It's um, one of those classic, you know, tiny monster uh, things, you know. Then we have, of course, as I mentioned earlier, The Man from Hong Kong, where... Uh, he, uh, well, not him, but may maybe, he I don't know, so one of the characters fights on the top of uh, Uluru, which is um, <laughs> really fun. This is actually uh, a 4K remaster as well. It looks pretty good, too. Um, totally worth checking out. Um, and it does have a reversible cover, but is the reversible cover worth showing off? No, it isn't. So now we have one which is pretty old, um, probably one of my f the first Blu-rays that my dad got. Uh, a very old for Umbrella, because this is actually from their original, well, one of their earlier uh, logos. Uh, this is The Mission, with um, Jeremy Irons and Robert De Niro. Ooh. This one is noted as uh, one of Tarantino's favourite horror films. Next of Kin, another Aussie film, another Ozploitation classic as well, from um, Umbrella. Um, I'm yet to get around to watching it, but it does have... Uh, the original cover in it. I, it's weird that it's, that Umbrella has that. They have the original covers and they kind of had these remake covers. Either way, good stuff. Another John Jarrett film, actually. Now, this one is definitely not Australian. But it's definitely fun and I love the cover. Night of the Creeps. This is one of those many classic uh, 80s horror films. Um, amazing one-liners, uh, it does have the actual, I think that was the reprinted, uh, one, um, poster. Looks more like that in a way. Um, but, I mean, look, you can't beat that, that is such a classic poster. <laughs> if you scream, you're dead. Tom Atkins in it is brilliant. Great one-liners. This one I actually had recommended to me by, um, in oh, one of my first ever lectures, uh, at uni, I remember we were talking, we had a week on Australian film, and uh, we talked about this one, which is uh, Not Quite Hollywood. Um, a pretty good documentary talking about uh, Ozploitation classics, um, because Australian film history is quite, it's, I wouldn't say underwhelming, it's kind of disappointing in terms of like what's actually happened with our film industry, but at the same time, we've made some pretty fun stuff like Mad Max and whatnot, uh, which of course most of it's noted down as Ozploitation, but yeah, Not Quite Hollywood, it's very good. Next up, we have another Beyond Genres. We have This Quiet Earth, which is actually a New Zealand film. That's like the slipcase. It's kind of, it's a weird slipcase. Um, really good film, though. Uh, I, it's beautifully shot. Um, it's really meditative as well. Overall, really good film. Definitely worth checking out. Next up, we have two more Beyond Genres. Uh, this one is Razorback. This one is definitely an Australian film. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't it be? Um, I'm yet to watch this one, uh, but I've heard interesting things. Uh, and of course, another Beyond Genres, as I mentioned. This is, be uh, this is the reanimated double pack with Bride and Beyond Reanimator. Um, interesting double thread. I haven't seen Beyond yet, uh, even since I last talked about this in my slipcase video. Um, 
But I have, of course, watched uh, Bride of Reanimator, which is interesting. I do think I prefer just the original Reanimator the most, uh, but me and my brother watched them as like a double feature. Actually, I think we watched the first one together and he really wanted to watch the second one, so I got this pack, but we never got around to watching Beyond. Not because we didn't like Bride, we just never got around to watching Beyond. It's like how by this stage all of my um, umbrellas are beyond genres now. This is another one, Spirits of the Air, Gremlins of the Clouds. Another one with really nice artwork to it. Um, this one is probably my favorite, favorite of the Beyond genres. I really like this Quiet Earth, but this one is just kind of... This one's a lot more fun in terms of how crazy it is. But they're still both really good films. Um, this one is... Tokyo Godfathers by Satoshi Kon. Um, really good film. I don't, I don't think the Blu-ray is that great for it, um, but it's still a really good film, so definitely worth watching. Next up, we have a Heath Ledger film, even with Rose Byrne as well. Uh, this is Two Hands. Um, this one's a really good Aussie film. Uh, highly recommended in terms of great performance from Heath Ledger. Rose Byrne as well is great isn't it? in it. It's a good tense thriller. Very well, well worth watching. Next up we have, uh, well he hasn't won his Oscar yet, The Lucky Phoenix in You Were Never Really Here. Um, this one is a very interesting film. Um, definitely worth checking out. Uh, I haven't actually watched the Blu-ray yet. I watched it in theaters. Um, interesting. Good. Very interesting. And lucky last... <laughs> We have two from hell. That's right, it's the Z Rob Zombie double pack, which was exclusive to JB, uh, well, like, Umbrella. Um, and this one I ended up having to buy off eBay, because uh, I wanted to get it in the end, um, but it wasn't at JB anymore. I think I actually got it cheaper off eBay. Uh, this is a double pack, comes with um, the House of a Thousand Corpses and the Devil's Rejects. Um, of course, I've watched these two films. It comes with them in two separate discs with a reversible sleeve, but there's not really much difference to the reversible sleeve. Um, overall, really fun films. I pref uh, If you've seen my... Or you can see my if you want to. I did a review, I did a review of Sherry Moon zombie films um, because, of course, it's pretty much like all the films that Rob Zombie has done because Sherry Moon zombie is in a lot of them. Um... So I have this down at the end under Z for zombie, just because Rob Zombie. Um, and because that's what I think of it more rather than anything else. But uh, definitely a fun double for, uh, double thread. House of House of Corpses I really like. I'm not that big on Devil's Rejects, but I still think it's quite a good film. Um, and I'm yet to, of course, watch Three from Hell. So yeah. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. Um, all right. All right. Well, I missed one. Uh, this is The Devil's Backbone. Uh, there is a Criterion release of this, I believe. Um, maybe Umbrella, I don't know. Uh, of course, this is in my Del Toro collection. I don't know how I didn't see this one. Well, that's my whole uh, Umbrella video collection, Umbrella Entertainment. So, a lot of those are uniquely Australian films. Um, some of them are, like, American films or British films. Some from the 80s, some earlier, some from mid... All that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot of variety uh, that Umbrella has, you know, presented to, of course, Australia, which is really cool. Um, so overall, that's. I think that's me done for my collection videos for a while. I might do one on my film books, but that's like kind of a separate thing. Um, but that has a lot of, you know, like I've got an alien making of book. I've got the art and soul of Blade Runner 2049. I've got stuff like that, uh, which I think are interesting to dive into. So I'll probably do a video on that soon. Um, but for the most part, that's my film shelf, uh, pretty much done. Uh, I think I might, but I don't know because it will take a while to film. Uh, I'll probably decide in the next few weeks as to whether I'm going to do it because it's going to take a long time to film and a long time to edit. Uh, I might actually do a complete Blu-ray collection, which um, is nightmarish to think of. <laughs> uh, 
like there is a lot of Blu-rays on this shelf and to be able to pull them all out and to go one by one by one by one by one and then to find the ones that are behind for like TV shows and stuff, just uh, it's a nightmare. So I might do that. If not, uh, if you want to see any other collections, I have Criterion, Arrow Video, Eureka Cinema, 4K, Steel Case, Slip Case. Uh, I've got the Cult Cinema slash Shock. Uh, one, I've got the um, Scream Factory slash Shout Factory, I've got the Random Collection Houses. I have too many collections in total. Um, either way, look, this has been really fun talking about these. I've really, really enjoyed the uh, reception that the videos have gotten as well. Um, it's I, I like some of, you, some of you guys even like who have channels and have done your own videos on this stuff um, and that have, you know, comments saying, hey, check out my stuff and whatever. I've really appreciated watching that. I've always, of course, appreciated the support as well. Um, but I've really enjoyed taking a look at uh, everyone else's collections. Um, there are some people out there who have mighty collections. Like, sometimes I look at mine and I'm thinking, damn, I have too much stuff. But then some people have, like, bigger box sets, some stuff that's much rarer, much harder to find. Um, but probably because they got it early on. Uh, but, yeah, overall... I am very happy with how my shelf is, um, and I'm really happy to have done these videos. So I think it's been a really fun start to the new decade especially. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe for more. I've got a lot more videos in mind to do. Um, if Again, that book collection and maybe a whole Blu-ray shelf. I should do a whole Blu-ray one. Like, why wouldn't I? It's a good idea. It'll take a while, but it's a good idea to do. Um, outside of that, thanks for watching. See you next time. Adios.